For more than 200 years, our tradition of welcoming immigrants from around the world has given us a tremendous advantage over other nations. It's kept us youthful, dynamic, and entrepreneurial. It has shaped our character as a people with limitless possibilities. People not trapped by our past, but able to remake ourselves as we choose. But today, our immigration system is broken, and everybody knows it. My brothers and I were born in Mexico. My parents left us when my older brother was seven, I was five, and my younger brother was four. My name is Edgar, and uh, I come from Mexico. I live in New York at the moment, and this is my story. My parents were here before us coming into America. They were here five years prior, and we were being taken care of by our grandfather. The reason why they left Mexico is for them to provide a better lifestyle for us. So they chose to come to America. You felt like you had no parents at a moment, you know, and then in school as a kid, people kind of bully you, telling you you have no parents, and there's no answer to give, because you can't explain to strangers what, you know, what you're going through. I came to America with my father. He actually went to get my brothers and I from Mexico, and he's the one that brought us here. There are like two ways that we see many immigrants come to the U.S. for better opportunities or because they're fleeing from persecution. And the two ways that they generally enter are with a tourist visitor visa or some other type of visa. The other um, group of people that come in is through the border. We lived in a, in a state called Michoacan. It's a southern state. So he went to get us there because that's where my grandfather took care of us. Uh, he arrived there and we actually went through the whole Mexico to visit like our whole family that we haven't met. So we went for like five states. We came from Ciudad Juarez. That's like the border between Mexico and Texas. And then from there we crossed that border and then we took a plane from LA to New York. Living in Mexico as a kid growing up, knowing that your parents are in a different country. It was tough, but at the same time, we had the love that our grandfather gave us. So if it wasn't for him, my brothers and I wouldn't be the person we are now. You know, we wouldn't have respect or manners or, you know, everything that I am now. My grandfather, unfortunately, passed away 12 years ago. And uh, my mother and, and, his, and her sister actually flew back to Mexico just to be with him before he passed away. As a kid, you don't think about how'd you get here. You just know that you were here. You know, you're here with your family. That first feeling seeing your mother for after five years, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. So as a kid, they don't even talk to you about visas or you're not a citizen. They just want you to be happy and live a better life. Coming to America is like not knowing the language. It's probably the toughest thing you can really face. Like my first day of school in America, I just felt lost. I felt like it wasn't my world, you know, and everybody's talking to me in English and I'm just like, I don't know what you're saying to me. Once you get out of high school and you start to realize that you're undocumented, that you don't really have open doors for a future, you kind of don't see a future. You just kind of see a low paid job and just, you know, kind of repeating the same thing that your parents were doing just because you're going through that struggle of being undocumented. During the um Obama's presidency, he um, used his um, executive power to only provide this work permit that's two years um, under the DACA Deferred Action Childhood Arrivals Program because he realized that Congress was not passing the DREAM Act that would provide green cards to the student dreamers. 
There are actions I have the legal authority to take as President, the same kinds of actions taken by Democratic and Republican Presidents before me, that will help make our immigration system more fair and more just. So he uh, used his um, executive power to be able to pull out this policy of at least providing um, this DACA two-year work permit. If you've been in America for more than five years, if you have children who are American citizens or legal residents, if you register, pass a criminal background check, and you're willing to pay your fair share of taxes, you'll be able to apply to stay in this country temporarily without fear of deportation. I started not to care, you know, because I didn't have a future. But then things switched, thank God, with the whole Obama and become a precedent in him having the executive order of DACA. DACA, it's Deferred Childhood Arrival. It's also something that when you're a kid and you have no idea and you didn't make that decision to come here, that's why they have this program. As long as you have a clean record, clean background check, you, you did all the requirements they asked for, you will get this. I look at it as a privilege where they give you a work permit, they give you a social security number, and you know, it kind of gives you hope. I knew that from that point on, I was gonna switch my lifestyle and also my family's because I could provide more than I did in the past. The process of DACA, it's, um, it's a little complicated at first because you don't know what to do or you don't know who to go or should you really trust a lawyer. So that's something that I kept in mind so I decided to print out all the forms and read them through and kind of just fill them out by myself. You would submit the forms of the DACA and then you would have to wait. The first time that I submitted my working papers, DACA, it took me about three to four months because it's something new. It happened in 2012. I got my first document papers at 24, so that was 2014. DACA is not something that will always be there is it's something it's a program that renews every two years so every time it's about to expire 90 days prior you should apply again and renew your work permit unfortunately I made the mistake of not doing that and I kind of just let time go by and then a couple months ago my job where I worked reached out to me and told me that I wasn't able to work there until I got my permit back and at the moment there was nothing I could do all I had to say was okay I'll talk to you later so it took me five months to get it back it was a blessing in the sky it was it's something that humbled me uh, to realize that this is a privilege it's not here forever unless I become a citizen you know the toughest part for a kid as an undocumented is that it's not their fault you know, and it's not their parents' fault either. Their parents didn't come with this thought of, look, okay, my kid is illegal. He has no future. As sad as that sounds, that future is better than the future back home. Because in the future back home, if you're not going to school, you're going to be a criminal or you're going to get killed by a criminal. So the choices are not really, you know, something positive. So a lot of people don't understand that, that this is the land of opportunity, you know? I have a sister that was born in America, and I tell her every day that she's blessed. She's born with everything that we're trying to fight for.